Hey guys, this is Eric with Olympic Health Physics, and today we're going to be talking about how do you protect your patients in CT. So to help guide us with this conversation, we're going to use the IAEA 10 Pearls for Radiation Protection of Patients in CT. And this will help give us some guidance on the best ways that we can employ to protect our patients. So number one, perform only the scan if it's indicated. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to avoid any unnecessary exams. So the lowest radiation exposure to a patient is the radiation exposure that doesn't occur. So if there's an exam that shouldn't be performed, then we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't be scanning the patient. Number two, we can use alternative modalities to potentially answer the same clinical question. So ultrasound or MRI don't use radiation and they could be alternatives depending on the diagnostic question that's trying to be answered. And so if a patient can be imaged using ultrasound or MRI from a radiation dose perspective, that can be an option when, when those modalities are appropriate. Number three, we always want to check with our patients to see if there's a possibility that they could be pregnant. We don't want to unknowingly image or do a CT on someone who is either pregnant or potentially pregnant. So we always want to verify with the patient whether or not they could be pregnant before we do their exam. We can do this by having postings in the department that say, please notify the technologist if there's a possibility that you're pregnant. And we can do this also by directly asking the patient if there's any possibility that they could be pregnant. Number four high quality detailed crisp images look really nice but they may not be necessary for answering the diagnostic question so we could potentially use a lower radiation dose and still answer the diagnostic question the trade-off is is that we're going to introduce some noise and potentially lose some image quality however that loss in image quality is not going to necessarily change the diagnosis or the outcome for the patient. So we wanna make sure that we're using the right radiation dose for answering the clinical question. Number five, we wanna use indication specific protocols where they're applicable. So for example, not every chest CT should be a full blown chest CT. We could maybe do a low dose screening, a lung screening chest protocol. We could do a low dose nodule follow up protocol. So we want to use very specific protocols for the type of exam that we're trying to do. And the reason for this is because oftentimes those very specific protocols can be acquired at a lower radiation dose to the patient. Number six, multiple pass or multi-phase CT should not be done routinely. So we want to try to limit the amount of uh, passes that we make through the patient and um, only do the passes that are actually necessary and we're potentially combine uh, different protocols. The reason for this is because multi-phase CT studies can often be two to three times the amount of radiation dose as just a regular CT. Number seven, we want to adjust our technique that we're using to image our patient for the actual patient size. We want to take into account the size of the patient and the exam and then adjust any uh, technique that we need that we're using so that it's specific to the patient and the body part that we're imaging. The reason for this is we, we want to get away from a one size fits all technique and move to very patient specific techniques. That way, smaller patients receive lower radiation dose than a larger patient. Number eight, and this one's my favorite, know your equipment. Know how the AEC works, the automatic exposure control or the tube current modulation. Know how that works for your system. So if you're scanning on a Siemens scanner, make sure you understand how does CareDose 40 work. If you're scanning on a GE scanner, make sure you know how AutoMA works. You wanna make sure that you understand how, um, how each of those uh, tools work on your particular scanner so that you can use the scanner to the best of its ability to help you give the right radiation dose to your patient. Number nine, we want to use good technique. When we're talking about good technique, these are things like making sure that your patient is isocentered within the gantry. This is all um, in the, both the lateral uh, di uh, direction as well as the AP direction. We want to make sure that that patient's isocentered, particularly when we're using tube current modulation. 
and we want to make sure that our scan length is covering only the anatomy that's absolutely necessary. So we don't want to scan our, our, the diagnostic portion of the CT any further past where it is, uh, is absolutely necessary. The one caveat to this is with a scout. With a scout, I'm in favor of using a little bit longer of a scout than what you intend to cover with your uh, diagnostic scan. The diagnostic scan should be shorter than your scout. And number 10, pay attention to your radiation dose values. You want to pay attention to that pre-scan CTDI you be, to make sure that you're falling within your predetermined dose values and dose limits. So pay attention to your pre-scan CTDI and do radiation dose reviews. Review the doses that you're using on say a monthly basis to see if there's any adjustments that you can make in your protocols, your techniques, how you're scanning patients. And then from there, you can have a pretty good idea of what your, your doses should actually be, what they have been and what they should be for the uh, equipment that you're using, as well as for, as for what your radiologists are accustomed to looking at. So those are 10 different ways that you can utilize in your department to protect your patients, to reduce their radiation dose, and make sure that they're getting the right radiation dose for the type of exam that's been ordered. I'm gonna drop the IAEA 10 Pearls PDF into the, the notes section here so that you be, you'll be able to access that. It's also available on our website, so you can check that out as well, and you can download all kinds of really uh, good resources there also. All right, that wraps this one up. Thank you guys for your attention, and we'll see you next time.